Hello and welcome back. In the following series of videos, we are going to talk about the frequency response of BJT amplifiers. In all the examples that we have seen so far, we have made the convenient assumption that uh, this small signal gain input resistance, output resistance of our amplifiers were constant, uh, meaning independent of frequency. Um, in all reality, that is not the case. We made the assumption that for our DC purposes, um, all the bypass and coupling capacitors could be substituted or replaced with open circuits. And for the AC analysis, for the AC portion of our analysis, we just replaced them with short circuits. Um, we completely ignored as well the effect of the internal transistor capacitances uh, on the performance of the circuit, as well as any stray or load capacitances. And so now we're going to focus on seeing how all these capacitances affect the response of the circuit and um, also being able to select capacitor values whenever we are able to uh, that provide a frequency response um, that, will, that will make our circuit work as intended for the range of, of interest. Um, so let's take a look at the actual frequency response of a general voltage amplifier. So we have uh, amplifier gain. And we're going to plot it uh, versus frequency. So this will be my frequency in Hertz, let's say. And this will be my gain. And the assumption that we have made, again, is that our gain is constant um, for any frequency. And that is true over a, a range of frequencies that's called the mid-band range. That um, defines the bandwidth of our amplifier. But uh, it does decrease at low frequencies as well as at higher frequencies. And so we can define something called, if this is my, um, my voltage gain or the magnitude of my voltage gain as a function of frequency, uh, this is what I will call my mid-range uh, voltage gain, which will, be, which will be the voltage gain in the mid-band region. So I'll define this as my mid-band region and of course we want to provide uh, the definition for you know where does this mid-band region begin and end and by definition we're going to assume that uh, there is a low cutoff frequency and a high cutoff frequency for this amplifier that are defined as uh, the points at which the mid-band gain falls three decibels below the midband region or the maximum uh, value. And so this will be basically the minus three dB point. Now, uh, FH minus FL is defined as the bandwidth of the amplifier. It's the uh, width of that midband region. And so Bandwidth equals FH minus FL. And normally, if um, the high cutoff frequency and the low cutoff frequency are very distant, uh, the high cutoff frequency is going to be much larger, let's say, you know, four, five, six orders of magnitude larger, and we can approximate the bandwidth as simply uh, the value of a FH. Now, uh, what's causing this, um, this dropping of the amplifier gain at low and high frequencies? Well, uh, for the low frequencies, that is typically caused by our coupling as well as bypass capacitors. So this over here will be due to the effect of coupling and bypass capacitors. And uh, the drop in signal uh, or in voltage gain at high frequencies is due to the effect of the internal capacitances of the BJT transistor, which we will study, 
as well as stray capacitances uh, from the wires um, or the connections and load capacitances. If our amplifier is connected, let's say, to another stage, um, it may have, you know, there may be a load capacitance there. So this is the effect, generally speaking, of um, internal transistor capacitances. load capacitances and stray capacitances. Um, and the reason why these capacitances cause such response is because, as we will see, the coupling and bypass capacitors uh, form a um, high pass filter type of uh, high pass filter, and that's why we see a high pass filter type of response with the resistances that are connected to their terminals and the internal transistor capacitance capacitances as well as the low transistor capacitances form a low pass filter, and so they produce a low pass filter type of response uh, with the resistors that are connected around them. So before we get started um, at looking at these capacitances and exactly how to calculate um, those kind of frequencies, we're going to do a quick review of um, first order RC networks, the low pass and high pass filters. Then we're going to delve into uh, figuring out how these capacitances um, are connected to the resistances around the circuit and how to calculate those kind of frequencies for individual capacitances. And finally, we're going to move on to applying that knowledge um, in order to find the frequency response of the typical BJT amplifiers, common emitter, common collector, common base, etc. Thank you.